How's it going my friends? On today's video, we're talking how to buy a short-term rental here in Tennessee, in the Nashville area, etc. Maybe not Nashville, but this is something uh, very near and dear to my heart, something I'm very excited about. So let's just dive in, shall we? How's it going my friends? My name is Jesse Lynch. I work with the hardest working real estate team in the game. We're called Welcome to Tennessee and you can check out our website welcome to Tennessee.co. This YouTube channel, if you haven't been here yet, welcome. It's, it's here as a resource to you. It's all about helping people find a place to call home, a place to land here in Tennessee, Nashville mostly, uh, in the Nashville surrounding area. And that's whether you already live in Nashville and you're trying to uh, discover some more and, and learn about buying a home or you live elsewhere and you're relocating to Nashville or Tennessee in general. First time home buyers, relocations, that's what we do, it's what we specialize in, it's what this channel is all about, it's what we do better than anybody else. So if any of that appeals to you and you have not done so yet, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, do everybody a favor, do everybody the whole the whole world a favor subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified so you can see every time we put a video up that's just like this or all sorts of different stuff if you haven't gone down the rabbit hole do it it's fun i think you'll be glad you did and if you wouldn't mind while i have you here give the video a thumbs up that's very very helpful to these videos and leave a comment um i was thinking about i watched the movie the whale the other day it's amazing if you have not seen the whale yet you should uh well maybe if you're ready to feel some feelings watch the whale no spoilers no spoilers here uh darren aronofsky one of my favorite directors ever he uh, made that movie and i think darren aronofsky changed my life with like requiem for a dream it's why i started making films and making videos which is ultimately why i'm here today talking on youtube in front of you so if you find value in these videos maybe leave a comment that says Thanks, Darren Ar Aronofsky. Or, I don't know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on The Whale or I don't know, anything else. I, I'll talk Darren Aronofsky all day. But not today, we're talking about something else on this video. Uh, as, as always, if you're thinking about moving here, get a hold of us, we'll crush it for you. You can go to our website, welcome to tennessee.co. We have a contact form there that you can fill out in like 30 seconds or less. Or you can shoot us an email directly to info at welcome to tennessee.co. It leads to the same inbox, so totally up to you how you do it. We just ask that you do. Look forward to it. Look forward to, you know, ultimately getting you here and getting the show on the road. Cool. Speaking of that, let's dive into this video. How do you buy a short-term rental in Tennessee? What's the process like? I'm excited about this one. Near and dear to my heart, like I said at the top. Um, I'm just, uh, yeah, it's, it's a cool topic that I think is exciting. It's something I'm personally um, really getting into. And, uh, yeah, shall we? Let's do it. Okie dokie, let's dive in. So a lot of these steps are gonna be really similar to just buying a home, right? I should have another video on this channel, it might be a ways back, just about like how does the home buying process work? Maybe I'll re-up that video as well sometime in the near future, um, just cause I probably have gotten better at videos. And the first steps are pretty much the same as if you were just going to buy a home that you were going to live in. Um, and so basically, number one, reach out to us. Uh, I'm gonna say generically reach out to a real estate agent, but I don't know, you're watching this video, I'm gonna assume that you're gonna work with us. So let's say you reach out to us and we, you know, we'll probably set up a time to have a phone call or a Zoom call, in-person meeting if you're already here, um, and d basically dive into, you know, this, basically what I'm saying here, but deeper, uh, a richer, more like in-person and more customized to your situation, conversation about everything going on. So during that call, we'll likely ask you at some point, have you spoken with a lender, right? Do you have a pre-approval? And most of the time, the answer to that is no. There are very few people, by the time they're talking with us, have a pre-approval. Honestly, we like it that way because we have lenders who we love to work with, right? They, they are very good to us, great communicators, really know what they're talking about. And sometimes people come to us with a pre-approval with a lender who, <clears throat> frankly, doesn't know what they're talking about. And so regardless of which order you reach out, if you reach out to us and you don't have a lender, we'll put you in touch with the lender, easy peasy. And basically that's kind of your next step is chatting with that lender, uh, going through, you know, they'll answer any questions that you have, going through that process and getting a pre-approval. 
a lot of the folks who are watching this, if you're thinking about buying a short-term rental, there's a decent chance that you've already bought a home, right? Not everybody. Um, some people also like the idea of house hacking a short-term rental. That's actually something that I do, I'm a big fan of. Um, I might make another video on that. Um, some of the financing stuff changes pretty dramatically if you're living in something that you're also short-term rentaling. Um, but again, we're not talking details of the financing, we're talking step-by-step -step overview of how the process works. And so in talking to the lender, you're basically gonna give an overview view of your financial situation and ultimately you'll come out the other side of that conversation or uh, you know that process with what's called a pre-approval. A pre-approval letter is basically just a letter from a lender, a bank of some sort that says this client, this person, this individual, you are have the ability to purchase a home. Usually it's gonna say a total purchase price. We like to use lenders who, who have uh, custom pre-approval letters for each house. So it's not like, hey, this person is generically approved to purchase a home up to this value. It's like, hey, this person can buy this house for the offer uh, they're making. So once you have a pre-approval, that's also gonna probably to some degree help you determine your budget. Although some people are in a position where they get a pre-approval that's way more than they care to spend. That's all good, you don't have to spend that much, right? That's just saying, here's the upper limit of what you could afford and what you maybe not afford. Afford is more personal, I think. Here's what you could get a loan for. Whether or not you want that much is a different question. But having a, a solid sense of what that looks like, I think will be very, very helpful. Hey, here's what your budget is. And if that's too high, then you can sort of like, but bring that down if you're like, no, I don't, I'm not trying to spend that much money. I wanna spend this much money, right? That, make, that makes sense, I hope. So once you have a price, I think the next step really is to begin to zero in on location and property type. I uh, tend to be a believer in like having a somewhat wide net in terms of like what you're looking for, um, but also maybe having an, an ideal, right? Like a specific type of property, uh, an aesthetic, a vibe or something that you know you're gonna do at a really high level. I also manage Airbnbs and short-term rentals and I'm a believer that design is really, really important um, and having something special is really important. So whether you're going to use a service like that, like us or something like that to help you with that, or you're gonna do it yourself, I'm, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just, I'm a big believer that design is huge. Uh, sort of feel the dream style, if you build it, they will come, but not just build anything, build something special, build something awesome, right? And obviously you don't have to build it. It could be a pre-existing thing, but you have to make it really, really cool, really special, and that's how you succeed in the short-term rental space. Personal belief. And some of that has to do with areas, right? You are going to want a, an idea, a grasp on how certain areas are going to behave with, uh, you know, specific rentals. If this is a short-term rental that you're buying just purely as investment, then you can sort of take emotion out of it. You can just really kind of get down to brass tacks, try to determine a place that makes the most sense for a short-term rental financially. On the other hand, if it's a short-term rental that you want so you can use, if maybe you're coming to the city or you want to go out further, right? Then the use case of it, whether it's personal use as well as short-term rental use or just purely short-term rental use, then I think those use cases will help you determine where it ought to be, right? Um, and I, I suspect Either way, it'll be a fairly wide range uh, of places, but ultimately having a firm grasp on like location and all that stuff will be extremely helpful and will really uh, begin to help you uh, narrow in. Otherwise, you just might have too many possibilities and that can very often lead to um, what, you know, analysis paralysis, basically just where you're, you, you can't make up your mind because there's too many options, right? And so the next step, once you have that figured out, you're gonna be able to get homes that will fit the, the wider criteria, right? We'll begin sending you homes that fit a, a wide and fairly generic criteria in terms of bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, that kind of thing, a unit type condo, single family townhouse, that kind of thing. And then of course, location. Um, and once you are getting those, that's when, that's kind of the fun part, right? That's kind of when it starts to get fun, right? It just begins to get like kind of exciting. You're getting homes that you know you could afford, right? You know that you have a pre-approval for and you're like, all right, let me see, does this work? 
does this make sense? You're looking at properties and homes and, and whatever, and, and you're also sort of cross-checking that with your understanding of, will this do well here? What are other things going for? You're underwriting those homes in a quick fashion, right? Typically, uh, like a, a quick, uh, quick underwrite where you're like, let me see this. All right, this home costs that much. That means the mortgage will be this much ballpark do i think it needs renovations no maybe not yes okay if so how much if not okay then what do i have to do for furnishings how much is that all right and then let's take that at and look at what do i think you know will this be booked up solid and there's a bunch of ways to do that again i'll probably make another video on that but you're underwriting the property will this be booked how much will it be booked for and you know will it for is will it be reasons that it will cost a lot to maintain because of the type of home or something like that compared to you know the nut the mortgage expenses and anything like that will you be greater than that and will those numbers make sense to you will your return on investment work out but if based on this general and probably somewhat conservative estimation on how much it'll be booked and then if it does work right if you're like all right that could be a good fit then you kind of get to the really fun step in my opinion which is when you go look at properties um you know you're actually stepping in the property seeing will this work and it's been my experience that almost always it takes it takes quite a few to get to one where you're like okay that will actually work very often you show up and you're like huh it's not quite what it seemed like, or maybe this would work if there were very few renovations involved, but in fact, it needs a lot of renovations. Um, that is tough, right? We also do virtual showing, so we can save you some of that, if, especially if you don't live in town, but uh, we, we're happy to go do a virtual showing for you, lay eyes on it, sort of, point out the flaws and that kind of thing to basically save you some of that time. And then if you like it, whether it's a virtual showing or an in-person showing, if you like what you're seeing, right? If you think it's compelling and you think the numbers are gonna work and you're, you know, you're not gonna have to renovate a huge amount, then you're putting in an offer. Um, and as far as what it takes to get an offer accepted, the, the market changes, it's dynamic, it's fluid. And I also don't like to talk about that in videos because I want our people to uh, have you know our expertise the folks that we're helping i don't want somebody to be able to watch this and then uh yeah the clients that we're helping are going up against people that kind of have all the knowledge that's in our brain so you make an offer and let's say it gets accepted congratulations now you're in what is called a due diligence period um, people call it a bunch of things inspection period um, and all that which is sort of a subcategory of a greater uh time frame known as escrow from the date you're under contract to the date you close, that period is known as escrow. Um, there's also things called escrow accounts. They have something to do with it, but they're not the same thing. Escrow is just this time frame. Um, and the first five to 10 days, let's say maybe three to 10 days, is usually a due diligence period. It depends on the contract and how you wrote the offer and all that. Three to 10 days is a due diligence period or an inspection period, right? And you'll be able to lay eyes on the home. Again, whether you're in, in town and you're, be, you're able to just drive there or you want to fly from wherever you are to check out the house, that is a really good time to physically get in the property to where you could back out if you need to during that due diligence period. That makes sense? In this sort of due diligence phase, you're also gonna be doing other things like making sure the area is what you think it is, right? Especially if you're out of town, that's a really good time to do that. Drive the area, check it out, maybe go to you know the commercial core if there is something like that. Um, and really just get a sense like, okay, do I think this is going to work? And I would also say uh, dive deeper into the financials. Does this in fact work? What is the heating source, right? Is there a cooling source? Does any of that mess with anything? Um, any of your expenses? Are cleaners going to be difficult to get? Or, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. Um, you're gonna dive into that part deeper in that due diligence period because there is going to be a sort of a, a, a point of no return, right? Or a point of consequence if you if you go past that. So you're really going to want to make sure that you feel very confident in this purchase beyond that point and once you're through there you're on to underwriting which is basically a mixture of a couple things number one is appraisal this is all stuff that the lender has to do to make sure that you are in fact 
you know, uh, capable of buying this. They're going to dive deeper into your financial situation and they're also going to hire an appraisal. An appraisal is a third party who is fundamentally, the way I see it, they are trying to justify the loan. They know the loan amount, they go look at the home and they say, does this purchase price make sense with this home and the previous homes sold around it and all that. They're, they're pulling up comps, comparable properties, and you know, comparing it to the home. Again, trying to justify that purchase price. And if that all checks out, if your you know, financial situation is as sound as you represented it to be, um, and they don't find anything wacky, and the appraisal comes back, supports the value, they say, yep, that seems like a solid purchase price, a good loan amount um, to give out based on this home, then you get to close on the home, which is when it's fundamentally yours to do with as you please within the law and you can then begin sort of the next process which would probably be getting it ready to use as a short-term rental um, furnishing renovations if need be i think that's the exciting stuff personally that's the stuff that i love i love to design and renovate spaces that's like the whole point to me and, and knowing that you're providing a place that gives people something special you know we've helped people um, with pretty dramatic life events we've had people who are going through some kind of medical procedure and we provide this sort of place of uh, hospitality of, of like warmth for them to stay at and we've had people you know doing really fun life events going to weddings all sorts of things and you know our place gets to serve as their core for that. I think that's so exciting. I think it's so satisfying. And yeah, just a big fan of being able to help people do that. And that is basically an overview of the process. That's how it works from start to finish. Of course, we'll dive in deeper if you're working with us. And we might do some videos right on this channel that dive in deeper to some of the, the smaller segments of that and just like how it works. Maybe the financing side, something like that. Maybe the underwriting of property side. Um, yeah, all those things. So if you want to work with us, go to our website, welcome to Tennessee.co. We have a contact form there that you can fill out in like 30 seconds or less. Super easy. Or you can shoot us an email directly to info at welcome to Tennessee.co. They lead to the same inbox, so it's totally up to you how you do it. We just ask that you do. Again, thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, and if you wouldn't mind, leave a comment, give the video a thumbs up, something like that. I'd be ever grateful for you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.